Hi everyone, I'm Ching. Today, uh, I want to talk about Upstart. So Upstart has been doing very well. It is one of my top holdings in my portfolio. In fact, it's the uh, uh, the the number one most heavy one in my portfolio. So uh, me and my members we have been buying Upstart uh, in in early June, right? Uh, around like uh, 110, 1, 120 thereabouts and it has been doing very well okay the, the company the business has been doing very well and the, the stock price has uh, reflected the strength in their business so from then we are up about 100 over percent yeah that which is uh, very good okay so let's look at their financials over here the upstart presentation so this is their most recent uh, financial reporting investors presentation quarter 2 2021 earnings on the 10th of August 2021 basically Upstart's mission is to enable effortless credit based on true risk All right so traditionally in the US people you use a FICO, FICO score which is a very um, uh, very old way of uh, assessing credit but now upstart based on their AI and machine learning they are able to assess people's credit even better okay so basically upstart is an AI lending platform they partner with banks to improve access to affordable credit so using their AI lending platform they are able to scale they are able to grow rapidly and profitably also so they have a two-sided business. One is they connect to consumers and also they connect to banks. Okay. And they are driven by a continual improvement of their AI models, which is their proprietary model. And some of their formulas that they use is based on like employment history, credit experience, their education, their cost of living, their bank transactions, and their application interaction. Alright. So the good thing about Upstart is 71% of their loans are instantly approved and fully automated and 97% of revenue generated are fees from banks which doesn't expose them to any credit risk so basically their loan originations uh, the risk is um, the risk is by the banks by the financial institutions so Upstart is just like the middleman they connect with consumers to the financial institutions right, and they earn a fee based on that and at the same time, Upstart is already profitable, right? Their net income is already profitable, their gap net income. Here's their value proposition. For consumers, they have higher approval rates uh, with lower interest. And 71% are instantly approved, no document uploads or calls or waiting time. They also say that they are more inclusive uh, with improved credit access for all demographics for example instead of only uh, uh, white uh, Americans or you know now they are they also cater to they want more even more equal lending right they also cater to Hispanics to the blacks and, and all that all right so for the banks they are highly automated they give them an all digital experience and it's customizable to the bank's credit policies and risk control all right and they are more inclusive more profitable lending also so they have a large and growing market so upstart started with personal loan originations which are unsecured loans all right no collateral needed and currently now they are progressing to auto loan originations which is a very big market almost six times more seven times more all right and of course eventually they want to uh, tap into the US consumer credit market also which is a 4.2 trillion total addressable market all right and this is the auto opportunity uh, update that they provided for investors so they have expanded their auto refinance from 33 to 47 states right in the US there are 50 states so they are almost in all the states more than 95 percent of total US population they have increased their dealership uh, dealership footprint uh, growing at 24% sequentially which is very good quarter on quarter growth so they have over 1 billion in vehicles sold through their Prodigy platform which is uh, Upstart's very own uh, uh, auto platform 
Okay. They also have five bank partners that, that they have signed up for their auto lending in their platform. So they have just started only. Okay. And Aftar is already very profitable. If you look at quarter two 2020, quarter three 2020, and quarter two 2021, can you see the, the jump in revenue growth? So they managed to grow their revenue by 1,018% year on year. Okay. Every quarter sequential growth is at least 30-40%. So their income from operations, they are already profitable. If you look at the light green over here, okay, they are up 36.3 million. Contribution profit is 96.7 million. Net income is uh, 37.3 million, all right, uh, which is more. Okay, and adjusted EBITDA is 59.5 million. Okay. If you look at, look at their revenue growth quarter on quarter is 60% from last quarter to this current quarter. Okay, revenue from fees also increased by 61%. Income from operations increased by 133%. Net income increased by a lot also. Right, so all their metrics are all very good. Okay, contribution margin has been improving. Adjusted EBITDA has improved by 200%. If you look at their balance sheet, uh, the amount of cash that they have, of course they raised about 250 million in, in cash uh, from their IPO. Okay, they are very cash rich. They have very little debts, about 95 million. Total assets is definitely more than their total liabilities. The amount of transaction volume of loans has also increased by, by a lot. And in terms of transaction volume, it increased by 1 billion and 71% of loans are automated. Their conversion rate is also a lot better, 24.4%. Okay, so in total, these are the number of loans that they have originated. Okay, that they have uh, transacted for on behalf of the banks. And of course, in Q2 2020, they are affected by COVID. Okay, but as you can see now, they are accelerating growth. And in terms of transaction volume, it has also increased. And most of their loans are fully automated from the very beginning in 2019, you know, 59%, now it's 71%. And the fraud rates have remained very low. It's at 0.4% very very low less than one percent of fraud okay so that they are doing something well with their ai i mean their, their proprietary formula is, is doing good so total revenue has uh, increased rapidly if you were to discount uh, covid contribution profit has increased they are already profitable gap net income is uh, 37 million can you see that the increasing trend so gap net income margin is already very profitable over here Okay, so this is what they are the outlook, the guidance. So they are guiding 750 million for this year 2021, right? Which is an acceleration of growth. Okay, so net income positive and adjusted EBITDA is also uh, very good, approximately 17%. Very good. Okay. If you look at their balance sheet over here. All right, they have a lot of cash, June 30, 2021, 500 million in cash, restricted cash. In total, about 600 million in cash. All right. So if you look at their liabilities, there's not much liabilities though, uh, except for the ones that is payable to investors, only 76 million. All right, that's very good. They are very cash rich. Uh, Okay, if you look at their revenues, uh, it's increasing by a lot from 2020 to 2021, last three months, 187 million. All right, sales and marketing expense is almost like uh, more than 40%. All right, they're still spending a lot on sales and marketing to, uh, to get more revenues. All right, and of course, after spending so much money, they are still profitable, which is very good. They could have easily cut down their sales and marketing and become more profitable. Right, so there's no problem. So it is a hyper growth company and also a very profitable company. All right, also a profitable company. And if you look at their operating cash flow, it is uh, very good. All right, from their net income of 47 million uh, in, in net income. All right, if you adjust for, for all this, can you see that you know they take on zero, almost zero risk? So purchase of loans for immediate resale, 3.4 billion and proceeds from immediate resale of loans, 3.4 billion also. So basically they are a middleman, they transact the cash on behalf of banks, right? They do not take the loan risk. It is very unlike the other players who are you know, buy now, pay later. 
they they take on the the credit risk but upstart is a, a platform they take fees from banks so they do not take the risk so it is actually very low risk all right if you look at the operating activities they are already profitable 135 million okay which is very very good very good cash flow uh, cash flows from investing activities nothing much to mention over here financing activities also nothing much to mention over here except from here they raise about 263 million in cash from their IPO all right so they are flush with cash and they can do a lot of good stuff on it if you look at their contribution margin all right is improving 2020-2021 from 32% to 52% very good okay if you look at their EBITDA margin from negative to 31% so very easily they could hit about 30 or 40% in terms of uh, net income margin as their business mature so they are going to be like a, a cash generating machine all right okay nothing much over here stock based compensation is fine 29 uh, million that's that's okay uh, considering the amount of growth that they have given to shareholders all right thank you very much and next let's look at their quick price to sale multiple current market cap is 24.2 billion uh, not a very big company but uh, not small also uh, quite a decent size so if you were to looking at if you were to look at you know 2021 revenue at 750 million a price to sale of 32 times but for me, you know, they are growing rapidly. Investors, we are forward looking, right? So this is only based on uh, 2021 revenue, 750 million. If I were to look ahead, most probably they could achieve 1 billion in revenues or 1.5 billion in revenues. And then of course it will drop down the price to sale. So as the company does well, the stock will continue to do well, okay? So for me, Upstart is one of uh, the companies that, you know, uh, I'm looking for. Uh, I'm always looking for one multi bagger a year. You know, last year or the or the year before, I I I bought Zoom or I bought CrowdStrike, and these are all multi baggers for me. So for me, you you want to make a lot of money, you just only need one multi bagger a year. And this year we have found Upstart, right? So Upstart has been doing very well for for many of us, for my members, for me. Okay, so these are our returns. So so year to date, end September twenty twenty one, our portfolio gained forty nine point seven percent. Right, some members did better than me, right? Around 50-60% depends on when they buy the they buy the stocks, right? And and some of them are maybe only 30% uh, or 20% return. But if you compare it against all the other indexes, the SPX, S P 500, it's only 14.7%. Nasdaq also the same 14.7%. ARKK is disappointing, negative 11.2%. So if you look at general in terms of our volatility, you know, year to date. Uh, end gen and feb and march it was down all right it was up and then it was down and then it just gradually went up all right so a as a as a business you know we are focused on the business we are not focused on the stock price if the business does well we we as shareholders will be rewarded okay that's all for today thank you very much and then goodbye